Papa Smurf! Papa Smurf! Azrael's attacking the Smurf village! <laughs> Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. Today I'm taking a look at the DC Multiverse Knight's End Azrael in Batman armor. Starting off with the packaging, we have our typical DC Multiverse window box. Down here it says Azrael Batman armor. Same thing as the blue Nightfall version. It is interesting to see how they approach the names on the side though. Between the two, I like how Knight's End stacks it. It just gives more weight to it being Azrael. If you're looking for this particular Azbats in store, here's your UPC. And then on the back we get some really nice comic style artwork. In fact, putting both side by side look really good together. Not entirely sure what's going on with these muscles though. I mean, I've heard of a six pack, but this is like a corn on the cob. Looking at that box art, I see something I wish that the new figure had. That, however, is a conversation for later, for now, and for packaging, I'm giving Knights and Asriel five points. Moving on to presentation, and the first thing we gotta do is put these blades on. Hey look, I'm Wolverine. I'm the most adequate at what I do, bub. And what I do the most adequately is review action figures. Luckily, these are all matching, so it doesn't really matter what order you put them in. And voila! I'm all ready to make some shredded chicken. Bringing out the ruler into the top of his head, Asriel stands at seven and a quarter inches, but to the top of his spikes, he stands at seven and a half. And believe you me, if you give this guy an inch, he becomes an evil Batman. TLDR, for those unfamiliar with Nightfall, Batman's back was broken by Bane, and he gave the mantle over to a guy named Jean-Paul Valley. Unfortunately, Jean-Paul was trained and brainwashed at birth by an order of zealots and he went nuts and he became a brutal monster. Fortunately, Batman got better because broken backs are the kind of things you get better from and the saga ends with a climactic battle for the mantle of the bat. I originally conceived this video as a versus between the Nightfall and the Night's End Batman but decided that they were so similar it really wouldn't be much of a battle. Side by side and even at a glance you can see just how much tooling they share. Pretty much everything from the neck down is the same same except for the gauntlets, with Nightfall having a very Batman-like feel, and Night's End almost a demonic red. Additionally, while Jean-Paul did maintain Batman's cape in the beginning, that was replaced with these scary mechanized spines. Fortunately, McFarlane made these out of a nice hard plastic, so no worries about warpage here. Additionally, the gauntlets have been tweaked to add these hoses. Unlike the spines, these are a nice soft plastic, so they don't get in the way of articulation, and I'm really impressed by how well all the reds match. Now you might be wondering what purpose these hoses serve. In the comic, that was to accommodate John Paul having flamethrowers. It's probably because of those flamethrowers that they gave him fists, but that's really my only complaint with this figure. You've got a character with these long, menacing, steel-like claws, and you ball them up into fists? The Nightfall version had the claws, so I kind of wish that they would have just kept them, or given us both as alternate hand options. Still, with so much plastic in the box, I can see why there probably wasn't a whole lot left over in the budget for extras. One way that Night's End improves on Nightfall is the paint. A major criticism a lot of people had with Nightfall was just how inconsistent the gold was from piece to piece. Here, everything is nice and consistent. There's also a metallic blue version of this as a platinum chase figure that I really wish I could have gotten. That way we'd have more of Azrael's complete evolution. But with this being his final form, I think it's a great way to go. And as much as I appreciate this very important first step, this upgrade is the superior option. Option. Had this been a versus, and for presentation, the round would have gone to Knight's End. That said, and for presentation, I'm giving Knight's End Batman five points. Moving on to posability, and the shared articulation between Nightfall and Knight's End is another reason why I opted out of doing this as a versus. He can look up this far, which given that high collar is pretty decent, and this far down, which gives me another opportunity for one of my favorite running jokes. <laughs> Insane amount of tilt, which is appropriate since he's, you know, Oh insane, and of course side to side. Moving down, and Azrael can raise his arm 90 degrees. Again, despite the hoses, there's no trouble rotating his arms forward and back. He also has a rotator cuff giving him some nice range. And then moving down the arm, he's got bicep swivel, and a much deeper bend on those double jointed elbows than I was expecting given how chunky those gauntlets are. And at the end of the arms, his wrists can swivel and hinge in any direction. Not gonna lie, this does really make me wish there were some plug-in flame effects. Moving to the middle, and this Batman has a diaphragm joint and a dumb 
dumbbell waist, but there is a slight catch we have to talk about, specifically this V piece. It's accurate to the comic design and was absolutely the right way for McFarlane to go, but obviously it's going to get in the way of hunching forward. Same thing with this piece. All things being equal though, this isn't a bad hunch forward for a DC multiverse figure. The arch back is really good as well, and that's in spite of this longer piece. Otherwise, as bats gets a pretty good amount of tilt and twist. Below the pouch belt, but above the thigh pouch belt, and Azrael has the typical McFarlane hips. He can kick this high and do a perfect split. I'm actually very pleased with the amount of twist he has in the hip, and then moving down the double knee has a great bend, and of course he's got toe articulation and very nicely integrated McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge, and like Jean-Paul Valley from a potential Batman replacement to a raging lunatic, pivot. In spite of the hoses and all those chunky back pieces, this figure is surprisingly limber. In fact, Azrael is so well articulated that for poseability, I'm giving this Batman five points. Moving on to playability, and if you'll indulge me, I'd like to take a moment to do some speculating and imagining of what could have been. As is, this figure doesn't have any real accessories, but that's completely understandable because of all the plastic that went into these spines. But imagine, if you will, peg holes in these flamethrowers. Now imagine that the metallic blue Knight's End isn't a platinum chase figure, but a separate release. Not just a separate release, but a collector edition. Thanks to all the reuse, that $30 figure could now include two plug-in flamethrower effects, alternate clawed hands, and an alternate John Paul Valley unmasked head. And of course, Course, all these parts would be compatible with this version. Consumers would then have been given the choice between the $20 red version or the extra bells and whistles deluxe blue one, and I promise collectors like me would have bought both so we could have had all those extra pieces. Instead, we're left with two figures that come with nothing and one that's only available for $80 on the aftermarket. Yes, Azrael does come with a standard issue trading card and figure stand, and if you want his detail backstory, pause here, but it's hard not to be frustrated by what could have been. Fortunately, playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. Starting with the only other Azrael's in my collection, and here we have Legends of Batman by Kenner. Be kind of cool to see the new McFarlane version in this color scheme. Next is the 1999 DC Super Heroes version by Hasbro. This would also be a pretty interesting repaint. And then once again is the Nightfall version we've already looked at. As for the true Batman, and here's the official Nightfall version, but I really like like how year two pairs with these. Otherwise, and for a couple of other classic style options, and here's the blue and gray repaint of Detective Comics 1000, my damaged but not defeated DC Essentials Nightfall Batman, and the Dark Horse 2-pack by NECA. Otherwise, and here we have the oversized Tim Drake Robin, the Nightfall era Nightwing, and just for jollies, the Batman Family 5-pack version of Batgirl. Back to something more Nightfall specific, and here's Catwoman, and Mr. Zazz, who I still think should have been marketed as a Nightfall figure. Otherwise, for a few villains, who appeared in the Nightfall story or are just plain classic, and here we have the Collector Edition Penguin, as well as the classic Riddler. But for a little something I've been working on, and here's a long code version of my Joker Kit Bash. Let me know what you think in the comments. On that note, and here's an Uma Thurman with a She-Hulk head that I'm thinking about using for a comic-style Poison Ivy. That said, for the other big bad of Nightfall, and here we have Bane. And lastly, here's Azrael the Bat and Azrael the Cat. For a relative scale comparison, here's as bats with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Wait a minute, I'm small and blue. Does that make me a Smurf? As much as I would have loved some of those extras I talked about earlier, I can't pretend that this isn't a striking piece all on its own. I still would have preferred the open claw hands, but it's not the end of the world. In fact, for playability, I'm giving this Azrael five points. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Infamously, Nightfall Batman was a Walmart exclusive and was near impossible to get in store. I checked my Walmarts regularly for months and still had to get him on the aftermarket. By contrast, Night's End was a simple, pain-free pre-order on Big Bad Toy Store for only $22.99. I haven't seen him in stores yet, so I can't tell you if places like Walmart might sell him for as low as $20. Either way, I'm a lot happier this time around, but I can't pretend that McFarlane didn't squander some of that goodwill by making the blue version a platinum. Even so, for price, I'm giving Asbats 5 points, averaging out to a perfect total of 5 out of 5.
Sound off in the comments and let me know if you prefer this armor in blue or red. While you're down there, let me know if there are any other Nightfall related figures that you'd like to see McFarlane make. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.